hear me now. Oh. Oh. I'm oh. Bruce. Okay. So, uh. I'm an you, angel. You do the intro to the video. I'm an angel. Right now. <laughs> I don't know what to do for an intro. Hi, guys. It's. It's us. You might know us. You might not. Um, don't mind me as I take my pop filter off. We're gonna be reading, um... Hell holds no surprises for me anymore. Amazon review for Haribo Gummy Candy Gold Bears by Jeffrey Lambert. He's writing the review. He didn't, like, make... Specifically the sugar-free ones. Spe the yeah, sugar the sugar-free ones. ones. This is a cautionary tale, and unlike most of the other reviews on this product, this is a true story, and its authenticity can be qualified by a small news item that appeared in the Toronto Star's local news section during the month of April in 2013, much to my chagrin. <coughs> I would consider myself a prudent man, not given to bouts of outspokenness or craving attention, and certainly not one to rock the boat. On any given day, I can be found reading a crime novel on a park bench in the middle of the city. Okay, this man sounds like a serial killer. I, I'm just imagining, like, this guy in this Learning trench coat. Just in the middle of the park, just like... Like, making That's eye contact very with everyone who passes. And, like, very typical of an actual book character to do. Yeah. You sure this guy isn't in the book that he's reading? <laughs> yeah, like that's... He sounds like, <laughs> like a typical detective. So there I was, in the middle of Central Park. My crime novel. Yeah. <laughs> Central Park. Central Park. It's the only park I can think of. <laughs> it's the only park anybody can think of. Alright, he's soaking in the, the opulence of nature while nibbling on my tuna f fish sandwiches and fending off voracious gulls and squirrels that threaten to spoil my repose. <laughs> okay, um, I have advice for this guy. Maybe just don't eat outside. This is me, the law-abiding and introspective, which is why it came to me as a shock to find myself in... in... Uh, in, in incarcerated. Uh, incarcerated because of the devil's confectionery, Satan's sweetmeat, Lucifer's lozenges that I can... <laughs> yeah, that's how you pronounce it. The that's horror <laughs> known as Haribo sugar-free gummy bears. I'll set the scene. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice also. I'm recovering from a fever and I have a cough. It was late winter slash early spring in Toronto, and the city had just been digging itself out of a late-season snowstorm. Canada deals with that a lot, don't they? I was heading to Pearson International Airport for a red-eye flight to Amsterdam in order to give the Dutch arm of our company some training on the new software that had been installed. I'm deliberately being vague to prevent my place of work from being linked in any way to the incident that occurred. Mm, must have been a serious incident. I had just finished packing, checked the time, and found I was running late. My flight was at 7.10 p.m., and it was now almost 5 p.m. Cursing softly, I ran out to the car and threw my bags in the trunk, hitting the gas a little harder than usual in my haste to make it to the long-term parking lot as soon as possible. Luckily, traffic was light on the 401, and I made it to the airport in record time, but knew that my chances of making the flight were still at risk if I didn't use my time wisely. So, first of all, I... I I know there's going to be a lot of comments after each uh, each uh, paragraph, I know, and a lot of them are going to come from me, but this one is, it's interesting because he says cursing softly, and he speeds a little bit. In the last paragraph, he's all, like, law-abiding and all, <laughs> you know, hot. And I'm he typed it all out so, you know, eloquently, and writes it out very, like, very well, like, English-wise. And it's just very funny to see a guy do that. But the way he describes it makes his very actions sound as eloquent as he speaks. Yeah, like... So, like, I I can't consider that he's being a hypocrite, but it is funny that I can't. I bet this man speaks in cursive. Like, he's just one of those people who, like, just speaks in cursive somehow, and no one knows how. He wishes there was a setting on Google where you could read everything in cursive. Yes, exactly. And not just the robotic voices that just scare me. 
Yeah, this is being recorded on the 24th. I'm gonna start sending out, I'm gonna start telling people like when the recording dates of things I do are. Just to see like how like how there's actually like two months between any given recording <laughs> session and when it actually gets edited down. I'm so bad, I do everything so out of order. I hadn't eaten s since lunch, and I was feeling a bit hungry. My stomach rumbling loudly in protestation, which caused me to look around at the other travelers rushing past me at the Disney ter terminal. Mortified that my bodily noises might be heard by others, I briskly checked my watch and decided that I had enough time to grab a quick snack before going through the baggage check and security, and would get something more substantial once I was through once I was checked through security. I spotted a vending machine nestled in a relatively low traffic corner of the terminal and rushed over. Already pulling out my credit card and mentally assessing what I had had a craving for as to save time <laughs> interacting with the machine, my eyes scanned the colorful array of confections quickly, coming to rest on a tantalizing rainbow-colored bag of gummy bears with a simple white and red logo. Harrible. Haribo. I messed that up. Terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Emblazoned across the bag, in what appeared to be a slightly tweaked, Helvonica rounded font. Helvonica, that's not even close. It's, Helve <laughs> it's Helvetica. Helvetica. See, I have my sunglasses on, so I can, like, barely see the words. <laughs> now, I'd... Now, I'd to pause here in the story for a moment. Okay. For someone that writes in cursive. Oh yeah, man. I don't. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Dude, listen, listen. I'll give. I'll give him some slack because let's be real. You can't write four thousand words without, without coming across it. What at least one of those, man. That's fair. It's them the grammar mistakes. It happens. Okay. Now I'd like to pause here in the story for a moment to underscore the importance of making proper choices. I was hungry. When you're hungry, you should eat food. Food is defined as a nutritious substance that people consume to maintain life. That is what food is. These days, the definition of the word food has been bastardized, and the meaning has been broadened to include veritably any material that can be digested, or rather, chewed and swallowed without causing death or severe illness. Haribo sugar-free gummy bears are not food. They aren't even from this planet. I imagine their origins being conceived in a boardroom in hell by a top team of creative pain administrators, administers, sorry, with senior level demons rubbing their hands together in ghoulish delight as hell's chief chemist slowly lifts the veil on their new creation. <laughs> that was pretty specific. So I wonder if he's actually been there and seen this. Yeah. Those are some, those are some specific titles. <laughs> The point here being, I made a very, very, very poor choice. I pushed the button and the vending machine ejected the brightly colored bag into my awaiting hands. I had always liked gummy bears. They were bright, but rather innocuous. They weren't overly sweet to become cloying. And of course, each candy came in the visage of a rather happy, docile bear, reminiscent of the picture one's mind eye holds of all anthropo anthropo oh, <laughs> anthropomorphic anthropomorphic bears from Yogi to Winnie. Okay, when I first read this, I was super offended. Like my childhood was crushed by the fact that he said Winnie, because Winnie isn't his name. It's Pooh. If you're gonna say it short, it's Pooh. It's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah, calling him. The way I figured it, I was taking a bit of a holiday from life, so I could relax my fastidiously regimented daily schedule a little, to allow for some frivolity. Does this guy even know what frivolity is? Is this guy one of those people that whose literal, like, existence runs on 15 minute blocks? Yeah, he's probably like one of those people who's like, ah, oh, frick it, I'll live a while, and then like takes a 15 minute break. Like <laughs> every five years. Yeah, like <laughs> it's like to the point where even the boss is like, dude, just please leave. <laughs> Take a break, please. <laughs> Seriously. Because for for me it's the opposite. I live life with no schedule at all, and then for fifteen for my fifteen minute break every five years I have to live it 
on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Not even my school becomes scheduled as hard as my mother tries. Anyways, <laughs> after all, I was going to be in Amsterdam come morning with 16 hours to kill <gasps> before I had to be training the Dutch employees. I like how he specifies Dutch. Maybe I would take a trip down to one of the coffee shops in the red light district and really let my hair down. Really? No, yeah. I wouldn't do that. I would see that area of the city from the bus as I went to the hotel where I would eat at the hotel restaurant and drink sparkling water. So I'd better enjoy the gummy bears, my one extravagance to commemorate my break from routine. At least the guy scoffs at the idea of the red light district. Just saying. I mean, Maybe fair enough. Player, I don't know. I uh, yeah, this this man is dude. <laughs> if you're gonna be in Amsterdam, at least like take a walk. Also, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, that's my advice. If you're gonna be in a foreign city, bro, at least take a walk. That's all I'm saying. Also, yeah. I repeat this, and everyone hates me for it. Sparkling water is trash. Everyone hates me for that opinion. I, I genuinely cannot stand sparkling uh, water. I can agree. It just it just tastes like soda, but there's not enough flavoring. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I, the I don't... problem is that all my coworkers bring cases of it to work instead of actual water. Why? So I just sit there and go dehydrated because I don't really like it. Don't you live in like... Wait. <laughs> you live in like a Probably. desert. Why wouldn't you just bring straight water? Why? Is... Because people like LaCroix. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never understand it. I mean, our Minnesotan friend hates it too. That's so that's not alone on this. yeah, that's true. <laughs> we have one sane person. <laughs> I can agree with you guys though. I'd rather drink real soda than sparkling water, and I don't even drink real soda. I joined the queue at the KLM line, which was mercifully short, most likely because all the passengers for my flight had already been checked through, as the flight was scheduled to depart in about an hour. I don't... That is the most unbelievable part. I've been on a lot of planes. <gasps> there is definitely people arriving there less than an hour before you depart. Honestly, though, that's weird, because, like... And that works for anything in real life as well. Like, nobody... There's not a... Cr there's, n there's not not a crowd an hour before anything. Yeah. If anything, the largest crowd happens within the last hour. That's how things tend to work. Yeah, like in the airport. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so basically, like in the airport, my experience has been there's about, like, a lot of people get there. Like, I would say maybe a fourth to a third get there, like, about two hours before, which is the normal time. And people slowly trickle in. Another, another third about, like, comes about an hour before, and then everyone else just kind of trickles through on all the other times. That's, like, genuinely unbelievable. So many people get there an hour before. I checked my watch again, frowned, and absentmindedly opened the bag of Haribo sugar-free gummy bears, and began to munch on them as the line slowly advanced. To be slowly, slowly advanced, <laughs> slowly <Sorry>. advanced. <laughs> to be fair, they tasted fine, just like every other manufacturer's brand with the colorful candy, and they were sugar-free to boot. That is what made the whole incident. That followed so baffling. If they had just tasted off or different, I most likely would have continued. I wouldn't have continued to sho shovel them down my mouth absentmindedly while daydreaming about what I would order from room service in my <coughs> hotel in Amsterdam. Yeah, that's weird. That's actually a commonality I've seen in a lot of other reviews. Is that the funny thing is about these sugar-free gummy bears is that they act it, like. By themselves, like, they actually taste pretty fine. I mean, they're probably designed that way. I would, I would, I just would imagine. They, dude, I've received those gummy bears from, those exact gummy bears from people on the street in, like, Halloween. You know, like, the kids go out <sighs> trick-or-treating. And Why? I got, and we receive those. We actually receive those. True story. We actually do get those from time to time. Thank God we never eat them because my siblings just don't like gummy bears. So it, it's never been a problem. And now Bro. that I see it, I'm like, oh, shoot. I don't even want to begin to imagine what would have happened if somebody had eaten one of those.
Cheetos. I, I, that it was good. I don't understand people who give out like sugar free or like healthy stuff on Halloween. Like I get what they're trying to do, but at the same time, it's like, why don't you just not? Why don't you just not? Just don't bring anything out. It's Halloween, bro. Come on. Yeah. Also, I just want to find. I just want to say how funny it is that he says they tasted just like every other manufacturer's brand of the colorful candy. If the man is that stuck to his routine, and he says this is his one break from it, how the heck would he know? Oh, true, true. Just saying. <laughs> my turn. Uh, as I gave the attendant my e-ticket and she weighed my bags, the first of the pains began in my stomach. I thought nothing of it at first, chalking it up to the fact that I needed something more substantial than gummy worms to tackle my hunger. But over the course of the next five minutes, the shooting pain began to come in more rapid succession. At this point, I had my boarding pass printed, and rubbing my stomach a little, I proceeded to security. I briefly entertained the thought of trying to find a restroom before going through security, but at that point my discomfort <clears throat> sorry, my discomfort was manageable, and I didn't think it was going to get any worse, certainly not within the amount of time it would take to clear security. Which, if done correctly, it takes, like, less than 30 seconds, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I would have been through all the lines in, like, 90 seconds tops. Yeah, people... That's standard. People complain about, like, security and how long it takes, but honestly, <laughs> my experience has been... It hasn't taken me more than, like, 20 minutes top, like, when it's packed. It doesn't yeah. actually take that long. It's not that bad. I don't know why people hate it so much. Yeah, and it's the same for, like, any place, honestly. Like, security into, like amusement parks or airports or uh heck even like i think one time i had to go through security for a camping trip of sorts uh it doesn't take that long it, it really busy, doesn't really. i don't i joined the line and started fishing for my passport to present to the agent checking tickets i felt a thin sheen of sweat break out on my forehead and underarms my features flushed for a moment as a wave of heat washed over me I didn't pay it much heed as going through security always caused me great anxiety and I chalked it up to pre-flight jitters. Okay, but honestly, like, I get that something too, like, anxiety while going through security and it doesn't make any sense because, like, I'm getting anxious and my mind is just telling me, it's like, what is going to happen? Do you think you, like, accidentally brought a gun somehow? It was only as I stood face to face with the agent and handed her my passport and ticket that I glimpsed the agony that was about to begin. It felt like time rippled for a moment, as if my consciousness buckled. So intense was the pain that fired through my bowels. I grimaced spastically and emitted a low moan and felt myself take an involuntary step sideways. Stars shot through my head briefly and my vision blurred and then snapped back into focus. The agent was staring at me with slight consternation and asked me if I was alright. I pulled myself together, stood up straight, and declared that I was fine. Mortified that I had a lapse of decorum not only in public, but at the security clearance. In an airport? As I fumbled off my belts to go through the metal detector, uh, the pain in my stomach increased, and I practically had to sit on the floor to take my shoes off terrified of what would happen if I bent at the middle to do it. It was becoming increasingly more evident to me that this wasn't just a stomachache. No, this was something much worse. As a child, I had had a bout of diarrhea after a trip to Mexico with my family. I remember the feeling of nausea that swept through me before my child self had surrendered to the gas pains and parked myself on the toilet for an hour. Uh, pooping until I felt like I didn't have any bones left. And that was how I, fe I was feeling now. With several key differences, the pain was worse, the sense of an impending bowel movement was so formidable, it gave me temporary amnesia, and it took all of my willpower, all of it, to clench my butt cheeks together to prevent my sphincter from exploding. A sudden shock of pain racked my body, and I half wondered if I was going to give birth to a Tasmanian devil. The crazy, fever-induced image of said cartoon animal-chasing Bugs Bunny 
through the splashy volcanic blah, 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 kettle that was my stomach and caused me to listen to short maniacal bark of laughter as I approached the metal detector, a wild, distant look in my eye, sweat now beginning to pour off of me like a long, distant runner in Kenya. The security agent on the other side of the detector shot a quick glance over to her co-worker who narrowed his eyes and made a subtle movement towards his holster. My breathing became uneven as I entered the metal detector, and I realized with alarm that I had taken off my socks without even registering it, and while my shirt tails was untucked in the front, I held my breath, my eyes bulging dangerously from my head as the machine scanned me. As I shakily moved forward towards the agent for a pat down, my stomach began to elicit sounds that can only be described as otherworldly. It started off as a sh it started off uh, it started off as a sort of bubbling sound heard from afar and grew in pitch and intensity at an alarming ring. My jaw dropped in shock as what I could only describe as the sound of an agonizing, wailing alley cat in the heat with a persistent drop Doppler effect added, added to its voice emitted from some nether region of my intestines. The officer's eyes widened in alarm. She kept her eyes glued to my stomach as she, as she thoroughly patted me down. As she reached my shins, I felt inward. I felt my innards suddenly expand, plummeting towards my rectum with cat-like reflexes. I screamed my pritchard. I squeezed my sphincter shut with what seemed like nanoseconds to spare. And I knew, I knew that if I didn't get to the bathroom immediately, I would bleh, myself. With a Herculean effort and all of the strength that I could muster, I forced my butt cheeks together knowing that one false move would open the floodgates. I began to walk like a duck, trying to remain as inconspicuous as possible, not even caring what now what other people were seeing in front of them. A disheveled, barefoot, 40-year-old businessman, red-faced and bulgy-eyed, sweating profu profusely, shaking slightly, and walking without bending his knees. That is a sight to see, to say the least. Yeah, that, that, that would be interesting thing to see. I think I would turn into that parent that, like, covers my child's eyes at the sight of that. <laughs> don't look to me. Like, don't look to me. It's the sugar-free gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with single-minded intensity... I grabbed my carry-on, shoes and socks from out of the plastic tub that passed the x-ray inspection, and without putting anything back on, I turned on my heels with the intention of finding the nearest restroom and slowly dying there one squirt at a time. I hate the that graphic. sentence. I hate that last part of that <laughs> sentence. I cannot describe how much I hate that. But! That's not what happened. But... I still slowly move in my chair. <laughs> yeah, that's not what happened. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just... Nope. Nope. I can read I the turned... next one if you want. I you, go ahead. All right. All right. I turned to go and found myself staring at three armed agents who stopped me and asked if I would follow them. Why? What's the matter? I stammered, wincing slightly at the act of speech seemed to strain the tenuous and extremely fragile truce I had negotiated between my bowels and the tempest that raged within. I have to go to the bathroom right now, I pleaded. Just follow us, please, they said, leaving no room for argument. The other travelers clearing the security check with curiosity and revulsion at the spectacle unfolding before them whispering amongst themselves and hurrying to pack up their belongings and get far away from me as possible. No doubt assuming that the airport had nabbed some sort of domestic terrorist. If I hadn't been fervishly trying to hold back the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, I likely would have died of shame. I like, I like the, uh, I like that reference to Pompeii. With each step I took towards the room that they ushered me into. I felt that my legs would give away. I marveled at how strong the human will could be. Marveled at what was essentially patching a hole in the Hoover Dam with bubblegum 
could actually be sustained indefinitely. I'm not sure about indefinitely, but okay, sir. <laughs> Maybe I would make it through this ordeal after all. The room they brought me into was an examination room. I had pretty much stopped registering details of my environment as my consciousness closed off all but the absolutely necessary functions. Breathing, ability to walk. <gasps> but I snapped back to reality when I heard the snap of rubber. Ooh. The slow, the dawning of realization poked through my agony and stoic resolve as I turned to face an agent donning rubber gloves. Oh, oh you get the super long paragraph. Oh, oh this will be fun. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I already know where this is going. and Yeah, yeah. All right. It's not fun, but it's really funny. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Sir, we are going to have to perform a cavity search on you. A young, <laughs> fresh-faced agent stated in a firm but emotionless voice. His short-cropped blonde hair was immaculate, and for a crazy moment I wondered if he was an actor. This was all some sort of elaborate practical junk done to amuse bored kids watching YouTube. But Remember? Remember that he said fresh faced. Just keep that in mind. Oh no. But I, I just want to know, like, I like the immaculate hair part. Like, this is all going on, but then like, he just kind of stops and, like, dang, that's some nice hair. <laughs> I thought his consciousness closed off all the necessary functions. He didn't tell me that he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a necessary function. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just recognizing that a man has good hair is not gay. But in all seriousness, it's like, yeah, you're trying to hold back the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, but damn, boy, that's some good <laughs> That's hair. some nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> it must have taken you longer than I did. <laughs> and I spent 20 minutes on this. <laughs> did your sister do it for you? <laughs> I just love the idea of him just stopping everything just to question this guy about his hair. <laughs> cool. He also figured out that the guy's fresh faced. So like yeah. he figured out that one, he's new and two, he's very well kept for an FBI agent. He must have taken right, tortured silence for resistance because he looked at me sharply and said, lower your pants and underwear, please face the desk. Don't worry about it. Um, that's the only context my parents have gone for what I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> Panic started my parents come in. Yeah. Panic started <laughs> to grip me in its icy grasp and the sudden adrenaline threatened to destroy my sphincters bulwark and rend my anus in two. <laughs> I, I inhaled sharply with a pained gasp. I doubled up in my efforts to clench my cheeks together. Sir, please. I begged and deferred to this kid in act of desperation. I have to go to the bathroom. You can follow this me kid. into the stall if you need to. But I had some horrible sugar-free gummy bears. And now I feel like... But they had stopped listening and smirked at each other. Two of the other agents, a tall, dark-haired female and a shorter, balding, fat man, looked away from me, and I could see them shaking a little as they stifled their laughs. Sir? He's able to recognize the other agents as well. I thought he was losing a consciousness of the surroundings. Yeah, this man's probably... He also managed to rattle there. off basically his entire scenario in a few words. Yeah, I, and I like... I like how he put the sh the gummy bears in quotes. I like how he does that every single time he mentions them. Like, it's just so formal, <laughs> listing the entire name. <laughs> I mean, the thing itself is demonic. If you don't refer to it by its full name, <laughs> these it's that serious of a thing. These gummy bears are like the, uh, like, vampires. They can't come into your house unless you don't, like, say their full name. Like, if you say their full name, they can't enter your house, but if you shorten it... <laughs> <laughs> they will show up on your bed tomorrow. <laughs> Get the garlic, boys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sir, face the wall and put your hands on the desk and spread your cheeks. <laughs> Why did he phrase it like that? That's that's actually how you do it. It's it's not put your hands up. It's put your hands in the air or show, put, put your, your hands, hands in the air. <laughs> no, it's, it's let me see your hands. Oh, yeah, it's, it'd be let me see your hands. It's it's formal. It's 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 not put your hands up. 
you know, it, it's not that it's not that kind of thing. They put it in movies, but that's not actually how it is. Yeah. The <laughs> no, I don't know this from experience. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> The All young right. agent stated, a lopsided grin on his face. But I began to protest, and the fresh shock of pain forced me to stop and lean on the table for support as an ungodly howl rose from my stomach, something between the dying moans of a woolly mammoth and a sound of the bubble wrapped popping underwater. I exhaled shakily, and my focus began to narrow as I rallied for the final battle. Shaking uncomfortably, and sweat literally raining down onto the tabletop in front of me. I turned to face the wall and heard a meek, childlike voice pleading from somewhere in the room. Please, it said, and then again, please, from somewhere within me. Some, from somewhere within me, my mind recognized this sound had issued from me, although my conscience had now begun to separate from my body. I held my breath and prayed to God for strength. He probably has some heroin or something up there that opened up, the female guard said, as a part of me that hadn't escaped into the ether yet, acknowledged that she was behind me to my left. Uh, you don't really need to be that far into the ether to figure that out, but I'm amazed you figured that out in the current condition you say you're in. Yeah. Probably high as a kite. Look at him, she said. The shorter guard agreed with a snort off to my right. So fat guy and, uh... The lady, and then the new kid. Well, this'll be fun. Spread your cheeks, the young agent said, his voice directly behind me and lower than the other two, and bend over. I think at this point, I don't think I would be able to recognize where the voices were coming from. I think I would be registering them as voices that I had made up. Yeah, just like... <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just figments of my imagination at this point. And I would have probably shit myself long ago. <laughs> I don't have nearly this much willpower. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, no, like, say what you will about this man. He's a trooper. He is, like, really out here. <laughs> like, Honestly. this is impressive. All right, how are you going to say this and make it sound like right. one word? Oh, my gosh. All right, so, so then that'd be... It's the same thing four times. It's a four, so it'd be... Please, God, please, God, please, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God. Oh, wait, it's a whisper. Hold up, hold up. Please God, please God, please God, please God, please God, please God, please God. I whispered in a desperate, maniacal, wait, what? Maniacal mantra. Maniacal mantra. Say that ten times fast. That is such a weird way to describe that. Like, that's the thing. I read it as maniacal, but then my brain was like, no, that can't be the way he's describing this. A desperate, maniacal mantra. Mantra. Originally in Hinduism or Buddhism. A word or sound repeated to aid concentration in meditation, or a statement or slogan repeated frequently. Okay, that makes hmm. sense, but that's still a... I... <laughs> <laughs> that's still a weird way to use the word mantra. Yeah. Like, I, I guess it makes sense, but that's just a weird it's way. It's not necessarily a chance, nor is it trying to help you focus in any way. Uh, unless it is, I guess, I don't know. I don't know, it's weird, bro. All right. I don't think I want to know at this point. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not even aware of my surroundings anymore, I felt like I was lost in opium fog with half-snatched images and sounds filtering through to create nonsensical versions of reality. Another volley of pain tore through me, and I inventorially leaned forward over the desk, my focus completely narrowed to spot the wall too feet in front of me, a curious imperfection in what seemed to be the, a bee whitewashed stone wall. It was dark, botched, with five millimeters long, and shaped like a long, smiling bear. A yellow, dancing bear. No. A green bear. No. Red. It was the color- it was all the colors of the rainbow. My god, it was beautiful. So now he's hallucinating. So he's seeing a gummy bear. Which on... honestly, if you see a gummy bear in your hallucinations, I... I think that'd be scarier. Yeah. Forget crapping yourself. I think the hallucinations is what's gonna scare me more. Yeah. That's... That's, uh... A bit more concerning, and now it's a higher priority. 
anyways um i just like how he finishes it to to recapture his mental state it was in the hallucination beautiful. he was like my god <laughs> <laughs> It just took something simple as a slight breeze to trigger Ag Armageddon. Why did I say Agamemnon? <laughs> to trigger Ag Agamemnon. <laughs> <laughs> Armageddon. They... Gosh dang it. <laughs> a bunch of Greek warriors just jump out of the screen to battle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's been raging inside of his stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> That's all. No trumpets, no fanfare, no fire raiding from the heavens, no dogs or cats living together in harmony, which already exists, sir. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I had to live in a house in Utah that was uh, four dogs and three cats. Pretty chill, for the most part. Let's see. No finger on the button, no profit to predict it, no nothing. As I stared at the rainbow bear smiling and dancing in front of me, my <gasps> sorry, whew. my mouth agape, drooling, eyes glazed and bloodshot, face coated with a sheen of sweat. Second time he said sheen of sweat, so it's not a typo of sheet. Uh, I heard the softest sound, an exhalation from the young agent behind me. And then at the same instant, the warm air of his breath feather across my butt cheeks. He is way over describing just the basic semi-unconscious human function of taking a breath. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> this guy, for just a moment, maybe less, maybe a split second, even a nanosecond, I felt the presence of God there with me in that room as neurons began to misfire at a blinding rate nerve ending nerve endings bristled and muscles twitched reflexively i stood on the brink with one foot hovering over the edge and then without taking a step i found myself plummeting i want to know how long it took him to write all this out and like edit it honestly and we've only come across one grammatical mistake too maybe two but yeah incredible it this is. is this is not your typical amazon review not at all. Not in, like, any way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, yes. Even the length itself, it's like... But still. Right. Holy cow. With a sound like an extra-large plastic ketchup bottle being run over by a Mack truck. My sphincter released. The pressure... How do you know what that sounds like? Yeah, that is and... an oddly specific thing to say. <laughs> also, the ketchup bottle has to be at least half empty to even make a sound because if it's full it's just gonna expel the ketchup and there's no air in there for that yeah any and, and you can't shake science. it science right check there. your science <laughs> <laughs> a mac truck you sure it's not a peterbilt sir yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at this, no i'm just i'm just kidding <coughs> the pressure of the blast pushed Wait, me a hard. mac truck he spelled mac wrong gosh dang <laughs> If it's a Mack truck, then it's M-A-C-K. Wait, yeah, that's right. Hold up, he did spell that wrong. Unless Apple makes trucks now. But I don't recall this. I mean, I hope they're not as bad as the actual computers. Oh. No, yeah, that's that's how you spell it. M-A-C-K. That's not... Yeah, that's not Mac a thing. Is, <laughs> that's the third mistake. Okay. Dang. Really letting his standards slip. <laughs> Well, I mean, the traumatic memories. Ah, okay. oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure of the blast pushed me hard into the desk, and the legs of the desk screeched as they scraped across the floor. My body remained rigid for a moment, and I experienced relief that can only be described as... Nope. In its purity. <laughs> my eyes rolled back into my head, and my tongue glowed out of my head like a half... Nope. Dog. And I admitted a low, sustained groan that grew in pitch as the filthy torrent pushed its way out of my body. He's Tremors racked like my happens. body. He's describing it like what happens in adults' bedrooms. Yep. This is disgusting. And I must He's have... taking the biggest crap of his life. This is not how you describe it. <laughs> 
and I must have looked like a fish out of water with an endless stream of feces firing out of its donkey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, changing that <laughs> word to that just is kind of confusing. <laughs> Biblical donkey. Biblical donkey, yeah. <laughs> Other sounds and sensations started to filter in as my conscience began to materialize once more. The muffled scream of a dungeon filled with prisoners near death radiated from my stomach. The rushing sounds of leaders of liquid trying to escape through an aperture too small to accommodate at all. At the same time, the omnipresent sound of chunky liquid squatter... Sla splatting the against Spattering. the hard surface with great force, the high pitched screaming of a woman's voice calling out to God, <laughs> another voice sobbing uncontrolling, <laughs> imploring to make it stop, <laughs> in my own <laughs> static monotone wail. <laughs> ah no. <laughs> This exists! <laughs> this exists! That is my favorite Why? paragraph so far. Why? All right. When my ordeal had eventually run its co I just can't believe you actually read that entire thing. You basically have read the worst of this entire <laughs> thing. <laughs> I've been getting all the easy parts. I'm so sorry you have to go through this. Oh, you know my pain. <laughs> it's too hard. You trauma yet? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> adventure karma, more like adventure, adventure trauma. <laughs> adventure <laughs> charma and adventure trauma. Trauma. <laughs> when my ordeal had eventually run its course, I was left panting for breath and wobbly legged, half crying, half laughing with relief, barely lucid and feeling. As if I had birthed an elephant. Believable. Uh, my colon felt like someone had poured chili sauce all over it and then sent in a colony of fire ants to eat it. Also believable. Uh, through my sobs, I heard the sound of dripping, like when the sprinklers are eventually turned off after an office fire or after a thunderstorm when the willow that overhangs a pond continues to rain down long after the sky has stopped. Oddly descriptive about the tree, but that makes sense, and by itself, that sounds like a pleasant situation, but in this comparison, you're making it sound incredibly ugly. I don't like you for it either, because I have a willow in my backyard. <sighs> From behind me, the sobbing continued, and I heard someone trying to speak into a walkie-talkie, but nonsensical words were all that the man could speak which sounded like the ravings of a lunatic. I don't... <laughs> I don't like this anymore. <laughs> this was a good idea from the, when we first started, and then it just... It's, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> gone from, dang, this will be fun, to why? Why are we here? <laughs> Only to I have suffer. A question. I have a question for God. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh okay. With great relief, I slowly pulled myself off the table, <laughs> legs trembling, my stomach eliciting one last sound, a, lo a loud, prolonged gas bubble that eerily resembled a pig. No. Why do you know what that's... Okay. I slowly turned I my head. I asked the same thing. I asked the same thing. How do you know it's... Okay. <laughs> I, I don't slowly... want to know. Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I slowly turned my head to survey the devastation. And in that instant, if I had a pencil or some sharp object, I probably would have gouged my eyes out in revulsion. And the smell. The smell was enough to drive a man insane. It was the stench of rotting potatoes mixed with sulfur and am ammonia cooked in broth of chicken feces and left to age for two weeks in a yeasty stew at the bottom of a French outhouse. After a healthful whiff of this ghoulish brine, I immediately stopped breathing through my nose, but the taste was to remain in the back of my throat for months to come. 
I find it interesting that he actually brings up the fact you can still s <coughs> you can still smell by breathing through your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> also, that makes sense. But why a French outhouse? The young agent had taken the brunt of the foul witch's brew. You're a witch now, <laughs> basically. And at first, I couldn't process what I was seeing. I thought somehow the young blonde kid had spirited away and replaced by a brown golem, or an ATV rider had spent the better part of the day driving through every mud puddle he could find after a torrential downpour. Which, by the way, is incredibly fun to do. <laughs> it's really, really fun to go mudding on an ATV. <coughs> With some degree of compartmentalization, I came to understand that for some unfathomable unfathomable reason this kid hadn't moved or hadn't been able to move through the entire fecal de deluge he had weathered the entire assault head on like some sort of hero from Greek mythology I had given this poor schmuck a one man a bleepity bleep that, that would make a Brazilian uh somebody wretched with disgust i like how he specifies brazilian i haven't seen <laughs> films made by brazilians like that i don't know why he knows that either but i'm not gonna question it because i sure ain't looking it up <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> we'll provide the link of the actual review in in the description yeah so that you can know what we're talking about it's yeah. it's hectic. It's interesting. Uh, still more. And he was still in the same position he must have been from the moment of first impact. I tried to comprehend how he must be feeling, what he must be going through psychologically, but it became evident very quickly that he had become very broken. <clears throat> no doubt forced so deeply within himself once the fire hose had been turned on, that there was little to no hope of him ever coming back from it. Certainly not without extensive psychotherapy or a lobotomy. I looked beyond his quivering catatonic crouched form to see a perfect outline of him cut out on the white wall behind him, either side filled with a dripping opaque layer of alternately pulpy and runny fecal stew. I noticed two quivering masses at either extremes of the room and realized they were humanoid in form, although the caterwauling that was coming from these broken creatures was just blubbering gibberish. And this was the tableau that was burnt into my eye, mind's eye for eternity. Needless to say, I missed my flight. <laughs> Okay. I like, he just brings that up. So, yeah. Anyways. I missed my flight, in case anybody was curious. In fact, there the next go. week is a blur. <laughs> Gotta work up the courage. I think this yeah. should be good, though. All right. I have the We're vague recollections of an army of hazmat clad figures looming through the brown landscape of the soiled room, the slopping sounds of rubber boots squelching in the puddles of fetid. Distress, uncontrollable wailing, and animal like sounds issuing from the mouths of the creatures that have been traumatized beyond their capacity for being put back together. The complete loss of sensation by waist down as I was. As I was rolled through the room on a waterproof gurney, its wheels struggling to surf on top of the. hmm. soaked floor. I spent a week or so in the hospital, enclosed in a well ventilated sealed room with suited doctors coming in on the hour to monitor my vital signs as they tried to rehydrate my body. I'd apparently expelled every available drop of water from my body that was possible to sustain life. All my clothes were incinerated in the hospital's crematorium and the soiled bag of Herbo sugar-free gummy bears was never recovered. This is my story. It is inconceivable to think that this kind of product can be sold legally and be misrepresented as food. I was lucky. I survived. But as for the families of the survivors, and <coughs> the survivors themselves, they will forever live with the trauma of the events that took place 
at Pearson International Airport on that snowy day in April 2013. 22,301 people found this helpful. <laughs> They're like, Yang, this, this really, really <laughs> helped me figure out whether or not I should buy this. <laughs> My god! Okay, I would like to say, 22, 22k found this helpful. This, this entire thing has 25,000 overall reviews. Man, oh, that's nuts. This is 4,000 words. 4,000 words. So now I have to ask for your, uh, we, we need to do like the general synopsis thing, you know? I don't think I will be buying this product. <laughs>